Now, what's really useful about this, now that we've set this up, because that took longer than actually just drawing the table, right? But now that I've got it set up, I can muck about with it and use that to make comparisons. So as an example, what I'm going to do is, let's just take this entire thing, everything that we've just um, entered in, let's just copy everything. Um, I want to be able to see this and a new version of the probability distribution down below. Okay, So I've just pasted it underneath. And then what I want to do is, instead of having a fair die, I want to imagine a die that is not fair. Okay, So for example, if I delete out all these probabilities, suppose I have some super weird die, it's got magnets in it or weights or something like that, and the probability of it getting a 2, 3, 4, or 5 is 0. There's no chance of getting these. Okay, Now I could just write in 0, 0, 0, 0, but as you can see, see those blank cells there? It's, Excel treats those as 0 if there's nothing in there, so I'm just going to be lazy and just leave them out. Okay. So now my only options are 1 and 6, which is weird, I know, it's just an experiment, okay? And let's suppose they're equally likely, right? So if each of them is equally likely, 1 and 6, what would be the probabilities that I put in there? A half, or 0.5. Either of them will do. So if I put 0.5 there, and 0.5 there, there's my probability distribution. I mean, if you want, for completeness, you can put your zeros in, but it doesn't change anything, right? And you can see I've got the expected value calculated one more time. All right, now, let's do this just for the sake of it one last time, and then we'll have the thing that I wanted to observe and illustrate, right? So I've just copied and pasted one more probability distribution. This time, I want to imagine, again, a, a die that's not fair, and the only possibilities are 2, 3, and 4. But I'm going to arrange them in a certain way. Let's suppose that, you remember how everything was a sixth before? Go up there, copy any of the values that's equal to a sixth. Let's put that on 2 and 3. And I want you to remember, in a probability distribution, everything in this row, p of x, right, it adds up every time to a certain number. And you can see that, by the way. If I come up here, um, one of the things that's kind of handy is, go back to the original, the fair die that we made, and just highlight those six cells. Now, even without doing anything, just highlighting them, look down in the bottom right-hand corner of Excel, right in the bottom right-hand corner. Because Excel knows when you're looking at different numbers, one of the things you'll often do is add up numbers. You can see it says the sum is equal to 1, right? Which you knew from the beginning, because every probability distribution, all the probabilities add up to 1. Same deal if you go to the next die that we did, the 1 and 6 die. If I highlight all those probabilities, have a look at the sum down the bottom, again, one, no shocks, horror surprise. When you have a look at this column, or this row rather, here, what are we summing to this time? Yeah, this is a third, because a six plus a six, of course, is a third. So what's the, what's the balance? What's the complement? What's the remainder? Two thirds, right? So I want to put all of that remaining stuff on the four. So let's make this our, um, it's our four heavy die. The most likely thing to happen is a four. So I've got equals two divided by three, bam. Okay. Now, again, just to check, if I highlight all of those, the probability distribution adds up to 1, like it always should. And if you wanted to complete that, you can put your zeros here, here, and here. All right. So, just have a quick look at these three dice. What do you notice? Why do you think I've randomly, not randomly at all, why do you think I've designed the numbers in this way? What do you observe? they all have the same expected value. Now, I think we'd all agree, these three dice are all drastically different dice, right? Like if you said, oh, you can take this one or that one, you would choose different things based on what the game was, right? So the point here is that expected value, which is a measure of the center or a measure of central tendency, it's useful. Uh, it tells you, for example, if you were to roll a fair die over and over again, on average, you get three and a half every time, right? Why isn't it three, by the way? Because three feels like the middle value, isn't it? Because we're just adding up and dividing by six. Actually, it'd be the middle if there was a zero that was possible, but it's not. The lowest value is one, right? So we expect three and a half here, but guess what? You expect three and a half for all of these dice, even though they're really different, right? So the point here is that expected value is useful, but it doesn't tell you the whole story. Anytime you just have a single value, it will only show you one slice or one, one sense of the story, one angle on it, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to introduce 
a new idea. What we'll do is we'll go up the top here, see where I've got row four, which is empty. If you right click on that thing on the left hand side, uh, you'll get a new, va uh, a new menu rather. And I want you to insert something in here so we have an extra row to deal with, okay? What I want us to do is to understand not just a measure of the center, but a measure of the spread. How spread out is this data? Because that's the difference between each of these dice. They're spread out differently, okay? So to do this, what I want to think about is each of the values and how far they are from the center, right? Let me say that one more time. We want to think about each of the values, one, two, three, four, five, six, and how far they are from the center, okay? So in order to work this out, how far is each value, x, from the center, which is what in this case? 3.5 for all of them, right? I just have to calculate the difference. So it's x take away our expected value. So I'm going to write that as x take away e of x. How do I calculate this on my spreadsheet? I'll give you a clue. It starts with an equals. What cells am I going to use? Okay, so I am going to use the 3.5, but I'm not quite ready that, for that yet, right? Because the 3.5 will be the minus that number, right? First, I've got to put in the, the, the x, yeah, and, and the cell, very good. It's going to be b1 in this case, right? So if I click on b1, that's the x for this column, and then I subtract, I can click on this cell over here, 3.5, okay? Now, if I hit enter, is that what you expect? Uh, it should be. Sorry, I didn't mean to do a pun on expected value, but yes, it is, right? One, take away three and a half is negative two and a half. Now, so far, just pause for a second and look up. So far, we've just been copying and pasting cells over, and it's all worked, right? But I want you to watch what's about to happen here as I copy this formula over, and we create a problem. My, my cell's not happy. Okay, now why isn't it happy? Again, don't type anything. I just want you to watch because I've created an error on purpose so that we can fix it, okay? If I click on this cell, what do you expect it to say? Well, it's going to be x, and we want it to be subtracting from the expected value. So let's have a look at the cell. It's not doing that. What's it doing? Yeah, it's, it's moved over to the right because we, we moved everything over to the right, okay? So this is not what I want. There's an easy fix for this. Go back to the original x take away expected value. And you know how it's got h3 there, right? What we wanted to do is, instead of moving from h to i to j and to keep moving to the right, we wanted to stay on h. So we use, you might have seen this before, we use a dollar sign, right? What that means is stay put. Don't move over as the cell moves. Just keep on looking at h, which is where the 3.5 is, OK? So now when I hit Enter, nothing's changed because it's still the same value. But now go ahead and copy and paste. Is that what you expected? That, that's looking better, right? And we can therefore go ahead and complete this. OK. Now, up here, we added up everything to get an expected value, right? So if I do the same thing and add up all of these differences, we get this. Now, this is not e of x. This is something else. OK, so I'm going to put this in a different color just so we can see we're calculating a different thing. Uh, let's choose that'll do. OK. Now, why have we gotten 0 when we added up all our differences? Why is that? Yeah, Tanuki. E of x is the center. And so all these differences are kind of, um, well, they're symmetrically laid out on either side. So that's why, in fact, you can see it, right? 2.5 balances out with negative 2.5. Same with one and a half, it's, it's exactly symmetrical, okay? So just taking these differences, it doesn't give us a sense for how spread out things are, okay? This is not good.